Along the banks of the Mississippi River in Fort Madison, Iowa, these sirens are a regular occurrence, signaling the impending opening of the landmark BNSF swing bridge to river traffic. An iconic crossing of an iconic river, this is a magnificent double-decked structure with a double-track BNSF transcontinental mainline on the lower deck and a two-lane highway above. While the railroad is protected with signals and derails, a simple gate is lowered down to close the road once all traffic is clear of the swing span. With the bridge tender satisfied that road and railroad traffic are safely curtailed, they begin the bridge opening sequence. The large electrical motors on each end of the bridge kick into action, unlocking the structure from its closed position and raising up the railheads to clear the fixed structure. With everything shown to be in the clear, the electric motors at the center of the span begin to rotate the massive superstructure out of the way of the incoming barge movement. At 525 feet in length and towering dozens of feet above the water, the center span moves surprisingly quickly given its impressive size. Under construction from 1925 to 1927, this is the second bridge to be constructed at this site. The original, opened in 1887, was a similar swing design but with only a single track and a cantilevered deck for horse-drawn traffic. By the mid-1920s, the ever-increasing weight of trains became too much for the original span and thus the Santa Fe replaced it with the structure we see today. Altogether, including the approach spans, the entire bridge contains a whopping 14,500 tons of steel and enough concrete to resurface two and a half miles of U.S. Interstate Highway. In the center of the span, we can spot the bridge tender's cabin from where the bridge is operated. The bridge has always been owned and operated by the railroad, and it has always functioned as a private toll bridge. Thus, the bridge tender is also a toll collector, acquiring the $2 fee for each eastbound vehicle over the road deck. After just five minutes in motion, the bridge has cleared the way for river traffic. Appearing moments later was the artist Randall, a tug owned by the Archer Daniels Midland Agricultural Empire shoving a standard tow of 15 barges upstream.
If that engine roar sounds familiar to rail fans, that's because the tug is powered by twin 16-cylinder EMD 645 diesel engines capable of 3,000 horsepower each. In a way, it's a pair of GP40 locomotives, but in tugboat form. As soon as the river traffic clears, it's time to get the bridge closed back up and ready for trains. On this railroad, there's always another one coming shortly, not to mention the several dozen motorists who are also waiting to cross the river. Closing the bridge takes a little bit longer than opening thanks to the relatively delicate last couple of feet. There's a lot of momentum to keep under control so the operator takes it slowly and carefully. Finally with the span locked back up the roadway gates rise out of the way and the rail seats are set back down. It's time to run some trains. This eastbound intermodal has been waiting patiently within view of the bridge, with an engineer keen on getting the show back on the road towards Chicagoland. Moments later, a hot westbound intermodal loaded with plenty of mail from UPS and FedEx knocks down their signal onto the bridge, leaving Illinois behind for Iowa and points west.
So goes the action at one of America's most interesting bridges. With several hundred openings annually, it is one of the busiest at-level crossings of road, rail, and water traffic in the country. Thanks for watching this edition of the Thornapple River Rail Series. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more railroading action from around the United States.